Hey, 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 all you fantastic R Space fans. Today, we've got a great story about a guy whose wife of five years has a secret date that she thinks he doesn't know about. But guess what? He knows everything. Let's get into it and see how it turns out, shall we? I, 30 male, been with my wife, 27 female, of five years. She has a secret date tomorrow night, and she doesn't know I know everything. So today I come back from work and hop in front of the TV. My wife's laptop is on the desk in front of me, and I'm just too lazy to go to the bedroom to get mine, so I just grab hers. I wanted to check my Facebook to reply to my cousin's message, but in the inbox, I realized that my wife is still logged in. Lo and behold, there's my wife, trying to set up a date for tomorrow night. fan freaking -tastic. This soldier, let's call him Stan, is 32, and he grew up in the same town as she did, but I think they only vaguely know each other. So my dear wifey comes home about an hour after me, and she immediately starts talking about the plans for this weekend. Tomorrow night, my friends from my hometown want to meet up. Stan, his sister Jessica, and another girl Sam. I'm not sure if I want to go yet, but it's okay if you don't want to go since they are all from my lame hometown. Then immediately, she starts doing plans for Saturday and Sunday. I wait for her to finish, and then I say that I absolutely don't mind coming with, especially since I want to meet her friends, or friend. She goes on for a little bit how it's really going to be boring and how I go to sleep pretty early, so I might get grumpy. I wake up early for my job. I keep pressing that I would actually love to go, but she changes the topic as she is almost 100% not going to go anyway. When she started watching TV, I told her I have to use her laptop for my fantasy football so I could see any new developments with her date. Then his message comes in and she nonchalantly exchanges the phone numbers just a few feet away from me. She used Facebook app on her phone and I can't see the screen, but I could see everything on her computer. Now, I don't want to confront her right away because she's going to find some lame excuse. I kind of want to see the excuse she's going to come up with tomorrow so she can go outside and leave me at home. It is eating me on the inside though and can't sleep right now. Our marriage is not ideal. We had some tough times recently and the sex life is definitely not what it used to be. I love her, but I definitely don't want to be with a cheater. She cheated on me, also with a soldier, what the hell, four months into the relationship when we started dating, not yet married. And I forgave her, but I swore to myself that this will be the only second chance. We don't have kids, which would make the whole thing easier, and we both have good jobs, so the alimony I'd have to pay would be minimal. Does anybody have any suggestions on how to handle this? Should I confront her tomorrow morning, or should I wait for the date to take place? So here I'm just going to go ahead and post her little convo, artistically modified, just so somebody can hopefully please tell me that I'm crazy and looking way too much into it. Is it just me, or is she really drooling all over that guy? Man, I feel like my head is going to explode because I'm so teed off, and now I have to go to sleep next to her. While I was typing, he sent her another message to text him during work if she gets bored. Nice, honey. I hope you have a very entertaining day tomorrow. Ashley, 825, 8.51pm. Stan, how are you doing, buddy? It's so nice to see you're doing well. Stan at 8.52. Thank you, Ashley. Great to hear from you. How are you? What's new? Ashley, 8.54 p.m. Oh, nothing new. Moved to our new city, recently from Old State. It's good to be back home near the fam. Where are you roundabout? I have to admit, I find your life is fascinating. I really hope you're doing well. Traveling much? Stan at 8.59 p.m. I travel a lot. Live in her in his hometown. I'm doing private security work in one other city for the moment. I teach some firearms and law enforcement, military as well. Just trying to stay busy. I may go back to the army. It really is great to hear from you. What are you doing now? Ashley at 9.08 p.m. That's fantastic. I bet you are in very high demand right now. I bet you are enjoyed getting to use your skills on the home front side. I always regretted not pursuing a life in the military, settled with being a her profession. It's the typical corporate job, but I stand out because I am not freaking weird. That makes me a rock star. So the corporate ladder is shorter for me. I move a lot, five times in six years, so I'm still a vagrant, but I like that. There's something refreshing to me with travel and lots of it. You've got to go to some interesting places, my friend. Probably not the reasons you wanted, but I remember you being a very worldly presence. You fit in anywhere. I know you probably hear this often, but the way you've served this country is so incredibly admirable. I hope you get to hear that often enough. Stan at 12.18 a.m. I'm sorry for the delayed response. I want to thank you for the recognition you have given me. Most do not say more than a thank you. Many guys see me as a reminder of what they have not done, and that makes them somewhat defensive almost. Most women just see it as something hot or sexy. 
The best compliments come from older folk. Younger people have no understanding of sacrifice or honor, but you're different. You really are intriguing, and you see through and understand people, it seems. That is why you are successful, I believe. It shows your intelligence. Ashley, at 8.43 a.m. Haha, <laughs> now it's my turn to apologize for the late response. Well, that's just about the nicest compliment I've ever had, so thank you. I wouldn't even pretend to imagine how difficult life can be for a soldier, but I know that if you guys don't do what you need to do, regardless of the public stigma, countless other people will die. That's what the news doesn't put in their clips, and that is what the general public doesn't quite grasp. What you guys do is the most selfless thing on this world, and I could not imagine a more honorable but difficult life to live. I will always be jealous that you guys get to live with such conviction and purpose. There's a very small number of people that deal with that hardship, and I hope if you ever want to talk to someone or you need someone to say thank you again, please always remember my info. I really wish I got to know you better when we were younger, but I don't see why we can't be good friends now. Stan at 8.53 a.m. Thank you, Ashley. You were always a fun person with a big smile and, of course, very pretty. Smile and have a great day today. I will be in our new city when this gig is up to see my brother, and maybe we can meet for some drinks and shoot the breeze together. Ashley at 8.55 a.m. You have no idea how much I would love that. You better let me know. I'll take it personal. You take care of yourself. Stan, 8.57 a.m. I will definitely let you know. Take care of yourself as well, and I will see you soon. My brother lives in half hour away. What area are you in? Ashley, 8.59 a.m. I am in a specific part of our city. Across the river from downtown, about 30 minutes from his brother's place. Everything in our city is about half an hour, I've learned. Stan, 9.01 a.m. Very true. Any good bars up that way? I like the certain area. Ashley, 9.02 a.m. Yeah, I'm pretty close to certain area. I'm trying to learn the local dive bars, though. The more local, the better. Stan, 9.07 a.m. I may know a couple you might like. I usually just go to the pub a block from my brother's so I can walk there and back without driving. Certain place has a cool spot or two as well. Ashley, 9.21 a.m. Certain place is great, I've heard. So moral of the story, I will defer to your judgment. Stan, 9.24 a.m. Ha, <laughs> I like any pub dive and dive. Not into the club scene. Who do you hang out with up there? And I take it you are working Monday through Friday, 9 to 5? Ashley, 11.40 a.m. Ha, huh, I mainly hang out with people from work right now since I'm still so new. I would not say 9 to 5, but I do her profession, so it's more certain times are busier than others. But my office is incredibly flexible with time, so it's a corporate office, but more flexibility, if that makes sense. Stan, 11.49 a.m. That's cool. We just got our contract pulled, so I should be in our city soon. Stan, 9 4, 11 40 a.m. Hey, you. Ashley, 1 39 p.m. Hey, buddy. How the hell are you doing? Stan, 2 38 p.m. Doing good, and you? I was thinking about coming up to our city tomorrow. You got any plans? Ashley, 2 44 p.m. I do not, actually. That would be great. It's been a long week. Stan, 7 39 p.m. Awesome, his number. I hope I can make it up there tomorrow night and hang out with you. Ashley, 7 48 p.m. Yeah. Okay, I saved your number. I am her number. Let me know if you come down. Stan, 1152. Sorry, been at the some show. I definitely will let you know tomorrow. Text me if you get bored at work. Edit. No word on her plans for tonight yet. I didn't push it too much, so she wouldn't get suspicious that there is something off. I decided not to confront her immediately, since I want to see if she is actually going to go ahead to meet that guy alone. I will keep asking to go with her, but I fear she will come with an I have to work late, excuse, if she really wants to meet him. I will try to find a way to figure out what bar they are going to meet at, and I will just go there and meet them. I think I will file for divorce if I see them alone. I can't go through the same crap again since it really affects my life and well-being. I'm strongly leaning towards no counseling if my worst fears come through, because I think there is a huge gap in our mindset if she finds it acceptable to meet a guy on a Friday night without telling me. I would never meet a four-year younger woman that I know from way back and were not close friends as an indicated in their messages on a Friday night in a bar without telling my wife or not inviting her with us. I can't see how she doesn't know that's messed up and how detrimental that can be to our relationship. She is definitely not an idiot to see this, and if she is willing to risk it, then it just wasn't meant to be. My stomach is revolting from uncertainty, and I slept maybe an hour last night. Dang, I hate this feeling. P.S. If worse comes to worse, I definitely don't intend to make a scene. I don't know that guy, and I have nothing strongly against him, although he knows we are married, because it's not about him. It's about my wife's choices. 
keeping my fingers crossed that she will make the right ones, but I don't have a good feeling. Hey OP, I think you may be reading too much into this due to her past infidelity. Reading her responses to his flirting, you were always so pretty, hey you. She never responds with anything about his appearance and never deviates from, hey buddy, which is an obvious hey guy that is just my friend greeting. I kind of get the feeling from your post that you're prone to overreaction and insecurity when it comes to her relationship with guys, which is all understandable since she has a history of cheating. She's probably well aware of how you feel about her talking to guys, so that could be a reason why she's trying to hide this from you. My advice? Talk to her about it. You're making this whole thing into a huge deal in your head. I mean, you're already considering divorce. Be calm and honest about how you saw the messages and that you weren't intentionally snooping. Honey, I made a mistake yesterday. I thought I was logged into my Facebook when I checked the messages on your laptop, but I quickly realized it was yours instead. It was a stupid mistake, but I saw some messages between you and Stan that makes me concerned about our marriage, especially since it seemed like you didn't want me to come along with you to meet him. Are we okay? What's going on? Don't be accusing because it honestly seems like an innocent conversation between two people catching up. The main thing you want to get straightened out is why she didn't want you to come along. I have to hand it to her though. She did mention that she was meeting up with him, and I didn't see any evidence of emotional cheating from those messages. I think you're overreacting, OP. Just talk with your wife about your concerns. Good luck to you guys.